happy Saturday morning. I know we're a day late with this live, but yesterday uh, I was having some technical difficulties. And when I have technical difficulties, I always consider that the universe is telling me it is not the right time for whatever reason um, to be doing anything. And so this morning um, I just hopped off of a mastermind call with one of my mentors and I was like, oh, I got to do the Ask Laurel thread. But um, I did want to say that today because so many people um, this week specifically asked how I actually do my messenger conversations in order to take people from messenger to a cell or from messenger onto a phone call. So in today's Ask Laurel thread, I will be going over this entire worksheet that I typically reserve for my Lean on Laurel students. So you're going to see how I do my messenger conversations for value bombs. You're going to see how I do it for power offers and then um, how I actually move people to a call if I can help them and even an objection message. So stay uh, stay tuned for that. What we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we're going to go dig into the Ask Laurel thread. Now, keep in mind that there is a new rule for getting your power offer looked at. If you would like to get your power offer looked at, please make sure that you read in this note right here and watch this video. It is also can be found underneath the offer optimization. Um, I have a video now that says, want me to personally audit and help you write your power offer. Here's what you need to do. And that is going to explain there that. So we are going to go ahead and actually I'm going to, I'm going to check the featured section because we do have a couple of important announcements um, on the Monday. I would love to have coffee with you. If you have any questions about strategy in this program or just an ad question or content question, or you just want to say hi, maybe you're new and you just want to introduce yourself. Um, I would love to meet you. Make sure that you read the details of this event because we do have certain specifications that you need to meet in order to get a hot seat on this call. But I would love to have coffee with you on Monday. Also, if you want a little extra kick in the pants, join the $7 programs telegram channel. This is absolutely free. This is just a bonus. Um, this is not actually required. Um, oops, I didn't mean to click that. This is not required, but you do get some extra stuff. Um, like yesterday, I sent out a little bonus um, to the people in my telegram channel. I do that all the time. They get notified of new offers. They get notified of upcoming calls. So if you want a little something extra and a little daily um, motivation from me, um, go ahead and join me at t.me slash the Laurel Show and you will get subscribed to my Telegram channel. That is just a bonus. Like I said, you don't need to do that unless you just want a little something extra. Like I said, I give people bonuses and stuff, but let's go ahead and dive into the Ask Laurel thread. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing this training on messenger conversations. Um, but I'm going to get Michelle first right here. Um, also, I just want to keep a reminder rules, only one question per member, make sure that it's well thought out and has enough context for me to be able to help. Okay. Do not assume that I remember every conversation that I've had. Remember, like I am in the trenches with my lean on Laurel students. And so here in the seven dollar program, because I only see you guys once a week in this thread, I have a lot of mental load. So make sure that you're giving me enough context to go along. Like if you're posting your power offer, make sure you give me context over what you do, who you help so that I can help you formulate that. But do not try to cheat the system and ask multiple questions. Um, right here, Michelle um, said that she had two power offers. Um, so I asked which one is priority this week. Um, I did not hear a response, but that's okay, Michelle. I will just go with the first one. Um, just so that we, we respect everyone's time, um, only one question or thing for me to look at. Um, so let's go ahead into this um, example. So power offer, right? This first line needs to say who it's for and why are they here? Buying property. That does not give me enough information, okay? I'm going to actually put that not enough info here. Who specifically are you looking for? Um, so for example, my wife and I are looking for real estate in downtown Phoenix, right? Um, and so the reason that we went through our real estate agent that we're working with right now is because she actually specializes in selling downtown real estate in Phoenix. Okay. And so I'm not looking. So if, 
I would know that she services other cities other than downtown Phoenix or even other parts of Phoenix. Like I probably wouldn't be interested, right? Because I want someone who's special, who's specially servicing a specific area. Now, if you live in a smaller town, you might not have to get that specific or if you just want to say, but just simply saying buying property does not appeal, right? I'll give you an example. So the real estate agent right now that's working with me, she specializes in downtown condo type properties, right? And so if she says, are you a couple looking to move to the downtown area and live in one of our wonderful downtown condos, right? If I offer to find your ideal condo in the next 30 days or less, getting you finance and pre-book, right? That would be a lot more specific. And so this, who it's for, is not specific enough. Everything else looks pretty good. Like I, I probably would try, the only thing that I would change is remember this needs to be a dog whistle. Buying property is not a dog whistle, okay? So let's go ahead now, Billy, and let's see, it was Billy and um, Reiko and a little bit of Amber um, wanted to know how I have messenger conversations. And so I'm going to take the time right now to actually go over that process. Now I have different frameworks for value bombs for power offers. And then I'll show you guys how to move them to a call. And I'm going to kind of explain my whole process. Now, the way that I do things are very, very different than the way that a lot of other coaching, well, I guess coaches would teach or sales coach or whatever. I am not, I would not consider myself a sales expert, but I will consider myself an expert at being able to sell people into not only my programs, but my clients programs, because I know how to have conversations and I'm going to outline the importance of this. Okay. So let's say, so we'll start with value bombs and then we'll go into the power offers. Okay. So if you have a value bomb, right? The first thing that you want to do is you want to tell them why you are messaging them, right? So for example, hey, Drew, I'm messaging you here because you said that you're having issues with your email strategy, okay? Give me a little more context, like how many people are on your list? What on average is your current open rate, okay? Do not just ask an open-ended question. Guys, people who need help, most of the time will ignore open-ended questions because they do not know the best way to answer. We give them choices. You can give them as many choices as you want, but we do not want to put the pressure on them to answer an open-ended question, okay? Like, don't say, hey, Drew, I'm messaging you here because you said you're having issues with email strategy. What are you struggling with when it comes to email? They will not know how, most people will not know how to answer questions like that. Give them ways to answer, right? Give me a little more context. Like how many people are on your list? What on average is your current open rate, okay? Now, step two, you wanna give them time to answer your questions, okay? This is super important right here. Step three, diagnose the real problem based on the information that they have given you. This is a little tip that I give to my Lean on Laurel students all the time as I'm auditing their messenger conversations. Guys, did you even know I do that? Like that is a, the, like the fastest way for me to help my Lean on Laurel students is actually by auditing their messenger conversations. And right here is where they mess up the most, okay? And so I always tell them, act as if this person in messenger has just paid you $500 to solve this issue in person. Okay. The reason that I am so successful at having conversations in messenger and training my clients on how to have conversations in messenger is because I tell them to act as if they have just paid you $500 to, to solve this issue and act as if you are in the same room. A lot of you guys are having conversations that are not helpful. They're not beneficial. Okay. So act as if this person has come into your office and paid you $500 in order to solve this issue. So once they answer your questions, if the value bomb you had in mind for them makes sense, give it to them and shoot them a little loom video of how they should use it. Okay. 
Your value bomb should always have the CTA that contributes to your solvable problem. If you did a great job of giving value, they will ask for a call. This is my favorite way to sell or book calls. Guys, you want to make sure that inside your value bomb, you have the CTA. So for instance, if your solvable problem is to get on the phone with 15 people every single month, your call to action inside your value bomb needs to be, hey, want me to help you walk you through this strategy? Here's a link so that you can book a call, right? Or you can just say, reply to me in Messenger and we'll talk about getting you on a free complimentary call, okay? Now here's the way. I'm gonna blow, I'm gonna like, make this really big and bold. The way that I approach every messenger conversation I have is what small win or clarity moment can I give to them in the next 10 minutes? Okay. If the value bomb that they originally asked for doesn't make sense based on the way that they answered your questions, grab another one that will make sense. And if you do not have one, grab a Google doc and a loom and make one. Okay. This is why I have so many value bombs. Every single value bomb that I give away includes a loom video that has a CTA for people to apply for lean on Laurel. That is what I do. As soon as people come into this program, their next step is lean on Laurel. If lean on Laurel is not the right thing, I will give them a link for a power hour. Okay. If you guys at any time want additional help, just go to how to get Laurel's help right here. You can book a power hour with me or you could apply for my Lean on Laurel program. Now keep in mind, my Lean on Laurel program is full. It stays full. I only take a certain amount of students because of the personalization that happens here. But typically we are able to get people in every seven to 10 days. So if you if you know that you're going to want to be in Lean on Laurel in the next month or two, apply now. Okay. So that's the way that I approach every messenger conversation is what could I possibly give this person in the next 10 minutes? That's either going to give them a small win or a clarity moment. Okay. This is where prolific content comes in handy. Guys, if you go to my YouTube channel, okay, you go to my YouTube channel. I have nothing but prolific content on here. I have troubleshooting your ads, ad strategy replays, frequently asked questions from students, power content mini course. I've got testimonials. I've got my greatest hits. And in my private collection, if I go to manage videos, I literally have all of the private trainings that I do with my Lean on Laurel students. I've got my open office hours. You can see I've got a lot of unlisted stuff here. I put everything on YouTube for moments exactly like this. This is where my prolific content comes in handy. If someone is having issues with their email list, I will grab one of the private trainings I did inside my Lean on Laurel program and I will gift it to them. Guys, again, I act as if this person has just given me $500, okay? So that's how I do this part for messenger conversations, okay? Um, for value bombs. Now let's talk about the power offer. It's gonna be very, very similar, okay? And we'll get to how to actually move them to a phone call in person. But I want, if, if you focus literally on solving 100 people's problems in messenger, you will never have to ever look for clients again, I promise you. And I'll show you why here in a minute, okay? So for the power offer, okay? Let's just pretend that someone um, saw my, my power offer on my page about my, um, my discovery call um, accelerator. Again, I'm going to tell them why I'm messaging. People forget. Okay, don't just say, hey, you know, here's my value bomb. That's what a lot of people do, honestly. Like the, the, one of the biggest issues I see is people just say, hey, I saw you wanted this value bomb. Here it is. No. Now you guys have my framework. Okay. Now for power offers. Okay. It's going to be very similar, but we're going to, we're going to be a little bit different. Okay. Because remember, this is an indirect, a post, right? A value bomb is an ind is part of an indirect post. People are asking for something that you told them you would give them for free. 
a power offer is a direct post. It is literally saying, I'm releasing, you know, if I offer to do X, Y, Z, would you take me up on that offer? So this is a direct, this is an indirect. So with the direct, we're going to have a slightly different conversation because people have already said, yes, they want to know about your offer. So again, step one, we're going to tell them why we're messaging them. Example, hey, Drew, I'm messaging you here because you said you were interested in working with me on launching my Discovery Call Accelerator in the next two days. I would love to have you. Even if you decide working with me isn't the right move for you, I want to make I want to give you a resource that will give you clarity on how to execute the strategy so that you will still get results on your own. Can you tell me which of the scenarios fits you best? One, you're a coach or service provider who hasn't validated or sold two to three of your premium offers. Or two, you're a coach or service provider with a validated offer, but have no idea on which strategy you need to use to sell more consistently each month. By the way, this is literally my own personal messenger conversation that I have right now. This is what I send to people. Okay. Again, do not ask open-ended questions. Most people, I did not just say, hey, Drew, tell me about you know, why you want to join my, you know, discovery call accelerator. Tell me what you're doing. No, we're going to say, can you tell me which of the scenarios fits you best? That way I know how to drive the conversation. Okay. Step two, I'm going to give them time to answer. Step three, I'm going to dig deeper. Again, I'm going to remind you, act as if this person has already paid you $500 to solve this issue. Okay. In this case, if Drew chose number two, I would ask them how many calls they are booking each week and which strategies they are currently using to get them. Okay, so if they told me that they're number two and they don't know which strategy they need to sell more consistently each month, I'm going to dig deeper. A lot of you guys are not digging deeper. You guys are just saying, oh, that's cool. Here you go. Here's the link to book a call. We want to dig deeper, okay? We want to know, is this person a great client to work with? We want to know how well does this person um, converse back and forth with you? I can tell you this, the way that people answer my questions in Messenger tells me what type of client they will be. If they are lazy in this process, they are going to be lazy in your program, okay? Again, the way that I approach every messenger conversation I have is what small win or clarity moment can I give them in the next 10 minutes? Okay. Step number four is I'm going to create a Google document based on the information that they just gave me. So if Drew told me that he doesn't know what strategy he needs to move forward and I, and if he is only booking one to two calls a week and he doesn't know, you know, and and he's using an organic strategy, I'm going to go to my little YouTube channel right here and I'm going to grab him my discovery call accelerator success path number two. Okay. You see, you guys see, and this, these all walk people through and I even have case studies baked into this. Okay. So this is how I create every single loom video. Okay. I show them why they're, what they're doing isn't working. I show them the tweaks that they can make to their current strategy. I show social proof of students who had the same issue and, and what we did to solve the problem and get them to where they are today. Remember this person is telling you they want to work with you. We are asking them just as many questions as they have for us because We want to see if they're actually a great fit for us. If we shoot them a Loom video and says, hey, you know, based on what you just told me, here's what I would recommend. And here's an example of a student doing that. Um, Again, this is where prolific content comes in handy. Okay, I am always creating quick Google Docs and using Loom videos to have messenger conversations. Again, I act as if they have just paid me five hundred dollars to solve their issues. I will say this, doing these two things, I barely ever, as a matter of fact, I cannot even remember the last time I actually pitched someone in Messenger. I let my value bomb do the pitching and I let this Google Doc and Loom video do the pitching. I, for the most part, do not ever ask them straight up in Messenger if they want to work with me, okay? But a lot of you guys are looking for ways to propose calls in Messenger. So after you've done this, 
okay? After you've done either one of these two things, okay? Here are a couple of frameworks that I give my Lean on Laurel students and my clients on how to actually move people to a call. Here's a more indirect way. Here's a direct way. So I'm going to give you guys each of these frameworks. So let's go with the indirect way, right? We're going to take a no pitch approach, okay? So some ways that I propose a call if I think I can help. Way number one is more indirect, okay? I say, thank you so much for answering my questions. It gave me so much more clarity on where you are now and how I can personally help you get to where you'd like to be. Would you be open to a 15 minute jam session this week? Now you don't have to do 15 minutes. You can do it as long as you want. I'm just giving you guys an example. Um, I also say this isn't a sales call or a pitch. I've made it my goal this month to help X amount of people with X problem and hopping on a Zoom call will not only give you your next steps to achieving X, but it will also help me better understand where my audience is when it comes to X. This is how I pitched people on those 100 calls that I made for my goal when I first started my business. This was the way that I pitched it. It was indirect. I told them, let's just hop on a call. I will not pitch you. By the way, these for me personally actually bring me more clients than doing anything like this. That's just me. Some of my clients have better success with the direct way. The direct way is this exactly. Thank you so much for answering my questions. It gave me so much clarity on where you are now and how I could personally help you get to where you'd like to be. In the last year or so, we've really dialed in our success rate for X. I'd love to hop on a quick 15 minute Zoom call so I can break down my strategy and how you can start using it this week. I do this stuff all day long, so we definitely have some suggestions for you if you want them, ha ha. I just always ask before I start giving advice, okay? So this is a more direct way of asking for the call, right? They, they're they going to expect to get pitched. Um, this is how I break the objection that, no, I won't pitch you. I like, I, I love indirect, okay? This is usually where I start off my students. Like if you don't have a validated offer, this is where I suggest that you start because you need these conversations. You need to gather data, okay? Now, if they object, here's message number one and how we follow up. Message number one says, gotcha, I totally understand. A lot of people do this as a way to trick people into a sales call, but I can assure you this will only take 15 minutes and you will walk away with a game plan that will be personalized for your business. Message number two makes sense, right? So I'll send this one first and then immediately I'll just ask them if it made sense, okay? Now you'll want to adapt these frameworks to your business, but now you guys have my frameworks by watching this video. And no, do not ask me for this document. This is for my Lean on Laurel students, but just you can make your own document just by watching this video, okay? Next up, we have Miss Amanda. She said, Laurel, last week you asked about the demand triggers for my power offer. So I added some to the bottom of the power offer template as suggested. I have watched the demand trigger module several times. And while I do feel like I understand the concept, I'm not sure I can really articulate mine very well. Looking for you to your feedback. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click here. So let's take a look at the power offer first. We need to like figure out like who is it for? Why are they here? Right. Um, moms who feel guilty for yelling too much, lacking patience, not present with their kids and feel like self-care is a distant memory. If I showed you how to use simple mindfulness, mindfulness tools for as little as a few minutes a day, can help you yell less, be more patient, prioritize self-care, and reduce mom guilt for good with noticeable benefits in just two weeks. So you could be calm, a calm and confident mom and trust in your own tuition without reading countless books, articles, blogs, or, or spending hours meditating. Would you take me up on that offer, right? Um, this, is, this is okay. Like, I would probably give this a B. Um, but let me just go over like the demand triggers, right? And, and what that means. So this, I would, I would test this and see how well it does. Um, but what I'm about to go over is I'm going to show you guys how to go through different demand triggers. So if you go and actually buy Joel's program right here, the power offer workshop, which by the way, if you want me to go this deep on your power offer, um, you either have to buy the power offer workshop or something that's right here using this specific link. Um, and I'll get to this in a minute. Um, but inside Joel's workshop, he actually goes through things called demand triggers. Okay. Now demand triggers are all of the things that would get a mom to say, this is me, 
right? And I need to read more. So each of these demand triggers is going to be a separate power offer, right? A lot of you guys think you only have one power offer. That is not true. Some of you guys are sitting in this program because you want to learn ads. That is a demand trigger, but I could go even further. Some of you guys are sitting in this program because you want to sell your high ticket coaching program by booking more calls. That is a demand trigger. Some of you guys are sitting in this program in order to sell your low ticket offer right? That is a demand trigger, right? So I would have a power offer for each of those demand triggers. So in Amanda's case, um, a mom being pulled in a million different directions, that is a demand trigger. This now, what we do with these demand triggers, right? We actually build out our signature methodology based on this, right? So Amanda in her course probably has a solution for this. Amanda probably has in her program a solution to this. A lot of you guys are writing your power offers that encompass your entire program. The demand triggers will help you reach more people. All of you guys have different demand triggers for your offer because your audiences are at different parts. Inside the workshop, Joel talks about like the, the Women's World magazine that's sitting on the shelf, right? When you go to checkout. The look at your power offers as each individual headline in order to sell the magazine, like pretend your business is the magazine and all of those different headlines, right? Their purpose is to sell the magazine to 10 different people, right? There's going to be 10 different headlines on the cover of a magazine. That is what our power offers are built to do. They're built to create intrigue with each of these demand triggers. So if a mom is wearing a million different hats, Amanda probably in her program has a solution for this specific person. A mom that's wearing a million different hats is going to be triggered by completely different language than a mom who's losing patience when kids don't listen or they have to repeat things a million times. So that is how we take these demand triggers and we turn them into individual power offers. The goal of the power offer is not to get people to buy into our entire program. The point of the power offer is to get people to buy into having a conversation with us so that we can help them solve specific problems. Okay. A lot of you guys get the wrong idea about power offer. So Amanda, hopefully that was helpful. Um, Simon says, Hey Laurel, I'm a newbie here and find the content helpful in understanding the detail of things rather than jumping straight to the end result of writing an ad. Simon, thank you very much. Very few people appreciate my program for this reason. And so I, that this comment touched my heart because that is what I want you guys to do. I don't want you guys to just be able to go and place an ad. That's not going to work. You guys have to understand all of these nuances that I'm showing you guys, right? So they say some background on me in the course, see, giving me context. This is perfect, right? Um, I'm an architect who's developed an online course launch price with an ultimate asking price of this to help people learn how to navigate and be prepared for their home build journey. As it's frustrating seeing many done over the due their, of their lack, to, lack of knowledge with just a little assistance would help them protect their investment a bit better. Awesome. Um, my wife and I actually just purchased a um, property on the side of our beach house in Biloxi, and we are actually about to build a house. So let's see how this power offer would appeal to me and my wife, right? Because we are about to build a house. Ah, okay. So I would not, right? Even though me and my wife are your ideal client, this would not appeal to me because you said new homeowners. Um, I would not consider myself a new homeowner, but if you said, um, are, you know, are you a couple preparing to build your first house, right? That would appeal to me, right? Even though it's not our first house, it is the first house that we are going to build, right? And that is technically your target audience, right? People who are new to building homes, right? You're trying to build clarity. So that is who I would say who is for. Um, if I help you gain more knowledge, confidence, and clarity, navigate your home build journey with ease in 30 days, um, I would probably go a little bit stronger on this. Now, again, I'm just kind of guessing based on the context that you've given me. If you said, you know, are you a couple looking to build your first home? If over the next 30 days, I helped you avoid all of the pitfalls 
about building a house and could save you thousands of dollars, right? In the next 30 days, I, I forgot if I said that. Um, then, you know, with, you know, without more wasted time searching and trying to figure out without having to um, waste, you know, have money down. I, I, like I said, I don't know if, but, about your offer, but we want to be clear, right? So let's work on just the, who is it for and the one sentence promise. I've given you some good language. That's that's a starting point. Um, like I said, like I, um, I, me and my wife are here. So that's why like I was uh, immediately able to help you because like we are going through this process right now, like trying to figure out like, you know, should we go with, you know, a, fr a friend wants to, to, to build our house versus uh, us hiring a contractor. Like, um, you know, how do we, how do we choose a designer? How do we choose, you know, who draws up the house? How do we like, like that would be like, this is all fears, right? Are we choosing the right type of house for the beach? Um, you know, are, are we building the right kind of house in the right type of area that's prone to hurricanes, right? These are all things that we worry about. So hopefully this is all language that'll kind of help you build out um, a profile for that perfect client so that you could actually be clearer, right? But new homeowners, that doesn't appeal to people who are about to buy their home. It's completely different, right? A new homeowner would be someone who just moved into a new house, whereas you're actually teaching, um, educating people who are about to build a house, if I'm understanding correctly. So hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. Let's see, Lindsay says, I'm running lead ads and I'm testing multiple images. Do I turn off the ad images that aren't performing as well? I feel like Facebook is already doing this for me by not spending my money on the budget. So Lindsay, I could better explain this in a video. So I'm gonna show you two videos that I want you to watch, okay? Um, the first one is inside the lead generation strategy, which I believe you said that you're running lead ads. So if you go back into the lead generation section and you watch this video, how to optimize your ad campaign. This will actually show you how I'm actually optimizing um, optimizing uh, my ad campaigns. Um, also, um, there's a troubleshooting guide here. Um, this video right here will be helpful, but I'm actually gonna show you an easier one um, on my YouTube channel. So if you want the short answer, if you want the short answer, watch this video right here that's underneath the lead generation section. But if you want to go me to, if you want to see overall my entire um, strategy for doing this, this video right here, it is on my YouTube channel and it is under Laurel's Greatest Hits on the homepage. It is called Campaign Setups, Troubleshooting, Testing New Ad Angles and Scaling. Guys, I did this training for my Lean on Laurel students and it is one of the most valuable trainings I have ever done to this day on how I optimize and add new ad angles into campaign setups. Also how I troubleshoot, it's 55 minutes long, okay? Totally, like I said, I could I could um, sell this video alone for hundreds of dollars, okay? So if you want the short version, this is the version, but I recommend this version. This will answer your question in detail, okay? Because there are some nuances that go along with understanding how to optimize this. So Nicole says, how do you think I can make this power offer better without being too wordy? I'm wanting a true 10 out of 10 to rock. <laughs> Let's see. First, first thing has to tell us who is it for? Why are they here? Attention moms of children under eight who want to bring more peace and productivity to their homes. I mean, I don't, I don't hate this. I, I really don't hate this. If I offer to reduce your child's tantrums and opposition by 50% in the next six weeks. This is really good. I would probably use um, probably language that moms would probably use. If I offer to reduce your child, if I offer to cut your child's tantrums in half over the next six weeks so that you can form a deeper connection with your kiddo, bring a smoother flow to the daily chaos, all without losing your shiz, would you take me apart? This is actually, this is not bad. Like I said, the only thing that I would, I would probably say, you know, if I offer to cut your child's tantrums in half over the next six weeks, um, but overall, girl, I would I would give this a B plus. This is pretty good. Like I would I, I would say that you're ready to actually test this. Honestly, like I freaking love that. Good job, Nicole. Let's see. Matt says the AI machine gives me an 8.5, but my wife thinks this sounds fanciful. My program does these things, so I'd love your opinion on it. Okay. Let's see. For those who experience, okay. 
for those who experienced a difficult upbringing but now want to make the most of their lives. Okay, immediately I'm like, red, stop sign. This is definitely not clear. I do not know who this is for. And it's because of two reasons, right? Um, experienced a difficult upbringing. That's the first thing that I don't understand is, are you talking about, um, what is a difficult upbringing? Like, did they move around a lot? Um, were they abused? Um, did they not like the school they attended? Like, it, you need to define this. What is this for those who define this, but now want to make the most out of their lives? Again, very, very vague. This, I, like, there are two, two phrases in here. Experience a difficult upbringing. We need to be clear and make the most of their lives. What, do that, what does that mean? Retire by 50. Go on vacations every week. What does make the most out of their lives? Spend more time. Like, what does make the most of their lives? My mentor, actually, I just got off a mastermind with my mentor, and he literally told everyone in the room, if you're using language that means different things to different people, don't use that language. And so that's going to be the advice that I give here because this is unclear and this is unclear. Um, if I offer to help you turn your life experience into your source of strength, passion, and purpose, again, help you turn your life experience into a source of strength, passion, and purpose. I do not know what this means. Um, I'm just going to stop right there because I don't have context over what you actually do, but this is completely unclear. Like I don't under like, I don't like the first thing before I can help you, I need to know who this is for, um, and what you're actually offering. I'm assuming this is probably some self-development type offer, but I'm not clear on what that actually is. So, um, even though the AI gave you an 8.5, I would probably give it more of a three um, because it's 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 not clear. Um, so now that we're we're talking about the AI, I'll show you guys something that one of my students actually built. If you go into the Get Ready Protocol Offer Optimization and you click on this link right here, now in order for me to and you to get access to these set, these special features, you must use this link right here. Once you are inside, if you, if you use that link, you will see, you will get access to me right here, okay? Now, once you hit Laurel, it will literally help you with your signature framework, right? It will help you with the power content idea. Like if you're trying to find ideas for your power content, check this out. What's your big promise? What's component one, component three? It'll have a power content writer. Let me sh actually show you guys how this works. Who are your customers? Um, I'll just, I'll just, l let me just show you guys how fast this is, like how awesome this is. Who are my customers? Um, coaches with, and I'll just make something with, with high ticket offers. Their biggest pain point, they aren't, getting enough discovery calls to enroll clients. What will you teach in the video? The $5 ad strategy that will book more calls. That will book, I'll actually say that will book five to 10 calls a week. What's your giveaway? The ad strategy on how to put that ad the ad, oh wait, the the step by the step by step guide on how to place that ad in ads manager. What's my name? Laura Portier, owner of Ad Coaching for Seven dot com. I, I should put my entire humble brag, but in order to save time. I am going to just leave it at this, but you want to put your entire humble brag in there, but watch this guys. I'm gonna hit submit, watch this. Okay, so check this out. Headline, struggling to get discovery calls for your high ticket coaching clients, discover the $5 ad strategy that could change everything. In the next four minutes, I'm gonna reveal the $5 ad strategy that will help you book five to 10, like, like look at this, this is pretty freaking good. Like he taught it my power content strategy. And he even has the elevator pitch for those of you guys who are doing lead generation um, campaigns. It'll even tell you how your elevator pitch did. But check this out too. It not only has my stuff, we had him put in Joel Irway's power offer. So if I go and grab my power offer, right? I'm gonna copy this and check this out. I'm gonna paste it here and I'm gonna hit submit. 
So Coffee Coach Ed rated my power offer as a nine on a scale of one to 10. It matches the format outline and clearly targets coaches and service providers. Who is this for? In addition to following, it'll also include credibility. Um, the offer concludes with an easy, actionable next step. Overall, it's a strong power. So it'll actually give you a score. So if you've written a power offer, right, and you put it in here, Copy Coach Ed will actually um, evaluate it. And then it even has the power offer improver. Okay, so you could actually put in your power offer again, what industry you're in and submit, and it'll actually help you improve your power offer. So you will get it, you will get access to Joel's stuff. And look, he's even adding some other, other people's too. But if you want my stuff, make sure that you are buying from this link right here that is inside the program. So just wanted to give you guys a quick demo of that. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, you guys are so talented. Like I freaking love you guys. Um, so Zenobia says, hello, please see the updates I've made to my power offer. Um, here's the um, screenshot. Let's see. Okay, so who is it for? Um, I'm gonna evaluate one of these, um, men and women. So when you guys want me to evaluate this, just put one. It, it just makes it, my brain works in order. And so my brain is gonna want to read all of these other things and it's gonna be out of whack. So um, actually I'm gonna go with this one because it just flows into, it flows into this next one over here. So let's evaluate this. Men and women of faith who want to heal from past hurts, rediscover who they are and live a purpose-filled life with peace, joy. Again, like if you go and listen to the feedback that I gave to Matthew, the same is going to apply here, right? I mean, men and women of faith who want to heal from past hurt, like I don't understand exactly what that means. Um, so want to heal from past hurts isn't clear. Um, it can mean different things for different people. Rediscover who they are is very vague, does not tell me who they are, and live a purpose-filled life of peace, joy, and abundance. Again, does not say who this is for. But I'll give you an example, right? Men and women of faith who want to heal from past trauma from their childhood and be able to build a successful business or some and, and, and build a successful business without their past getting in the way or something. Like, I just made that up. Like, that's probably not something I would say, but it's so vague. Like, who are these people? Like, 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 even if I go to the offer, if I offer to support you in healing past wounds, find freedom and releasing shame and guilt, establish healthy habits and rediscover, like if you said establish healthy habits, right? That's a, that's a demand trigger. Um, you know, like, so I'm, I'm going to use this just for, just for example purposes of how clear I want you guys to be. So if you said men and women of faith who have let their health go because they've experienced childhood trauma, if over the next 30 days I could help you lose that weight that was brought on by trauma and help you get, you know, back into the best shape of your life without having to give up the foods that like I'm just being I'm just giving an example of just picking out things that I saw here because you said establish healthy habits this would be a demand trigger right we went back to going back to the demand trigger so I want you to go back but I don't want you to, to touch anything else I just want you to tell me who is it for why are they here and what is the one sentence promise okay go back and and, and study what I what I was telling Matthew here um, and also what I did with Amanda and the demand triggers, that's going to help us create a very specific power offer. Let's see, Akiko says, hey Laurel, I'm wondering if power content ads should always be on Facebook. No, I will say no. Even if you go into the power content training, I literally, like my entire training is centered around, you need to be doing these everywhere. Um, here's how to launch it on Facebook. Here's how to launch it on TikTok. Here's how to do it on YouTube. So no, I recommend putting your power content everywhere. Even podcasts are considered power content, right? Um, they say, um, I've been trying to grow my business organically on Instagram and haven't been doing any business activity on Facebook. That's cool. Stick to Instagram. I always tell people stick to Inst t stick to the platform until you've made at least 100, 200,000 before moving to others. Now, if you just want to like put your content in different places like I do, you could actually utilize um, this tool right here. If you go to Lanya, tools I recommend. One stream live will put your piece of content across multiple platforms. This is what I use. One stream live, it goes everywhere on all multiple platforms. I do it one time. 
Um, cause I primarily focus on Facebook and YouTube. Um, but that this right here, um, make sure that it goes everywhere just because I'm a, so, but until you get to your hundred, 200,000 focus on like having conversations on one platform. So if it's Instagram, you can, like, I, like, I see that you say that you can't do video ads longer than 120 seconds. That's not true. Um, I've got video ads that, that, that go longer than that. Um, you could actually have video ads that, that, that go the three to five minute long. Um, that was a past rule. Um, you can run ads longer than, than this. So, so just make sure you're, you're staying the course with Instagram. Um, and, and don't freak out about putting it everywhere, but you can't, like I said, if you use this tool right here, here's my personal link. I would appreciate you guys using it. You don't have to, but I would appreciate it. All the value that we, that we have in this program. Um, but yeah, focus on that, but you can absolutely pick Instagram and do all of that. Don't worry about the, the, like you said, I, like I said, you can do three to five minute videos. Let's see. Daniel says, hello, here's a copy of my power offer. Let's see. Who is this for? Overweight and out of shape dieters. Okay. We got a winner. We got a winner, Daniel. Look at this. Overweight and out of shape dieters who have tried every diet and workout program under the sun, but have lost hope in reaching their weight loss goals. This is, this is super clear. I like this. There's some, there's some language we can go in and optimize, but you know what? It's, it's pretty clear. If I offer to help you, uh, such a person, <laughs> lose 20 people don't talk like that but i get what you're you're trying to do if i offer to help you lose 20 to 50 pounds of fat in the next three to five months that's clear right if i offer to help you the first thing we want to do is we want to write it compliant right i understand daniel would not be able it is daniel right yeah daniel would not be able to write this in in second person but you can write it in third person a little bit better than this. But the first variation, you want to be able to write it as clear as possible. So you want to write it in second person. But then once you have it approved by me, then we'll go and make it third person, right? But the first iteration, we want to make it as, as clear as possible. This is clear. If I offer to help you lose 20 to 50 pounds of fat in the next three to six months, while transforming their body into one they only can dream of having, ugh, like, again, right? These two benefits are not strong, but this without is very strong without starving themselves, giving up the foods they enjoy. Okay. So you could actually use some of this, right? If I offer to help you lose 20 to 50 pounds of fat in the next six months with, you know, while eating the foods that you enjoy, right? Um, utilizing quick 30 minute workouts that you can do anywhere, right? Without having to be on a fitness kick 24 seven, would you take me up on that offer? Like I, I kind of, cause you use, cause we use the two without here, but you get what I'm saying. Like without, without having to, like if you could make this without going to the gym, right? Because then you could say, if I were to help you lose um, while eating the foods that you love, while only working out 30 minutes, three times a week, without even having to go to a gym, would you take me up on that offer, right? That would make that stronger. Um, but yeah, everything is good. It's just this part, it kind of gets a little clunky. So use some of that language that I just gave you there. Um, Reiko got his, uh, got there. I don't know if it's a, it's just a smiley face. So I don't know if it's a he or she um, by going over the messenger at the beginning. So if you are Reiko Co, um, go back, rewind this video a little bit. Um, my messenger training will answer this question. And Miss Amber says, I am still stuck from last week, the strategy I could use for my 197. Here's a doc with the context. Cool. I made Amber a strategy um, last week and I went ahead because Miss Amber gave me edit um, access to this. So I would recommend Amber that you start with a power content video with your value bomb. Just go into the actual program and just follow this. Just create one. I know it'll tell, it'll say to create one. I mean, it'll, it'll say to create three. Um, but just start with, uh, with one, right? With your value bomb as the CTA. And you're going to see in this training right here that one of these, my two new power content strategies, you will see that one of them is a messenger ad instead of a video view ad that gets people to comment because you said that you are likely um, not, people um, will probably not raise their hand for this. Um, so what you want to do is just go watch this video. I would go through this, but build your power content video with the CTA for that value bomb. 
um, and use a messenger call to action. Like click the link below and I'll send you this, this guide to you in messenger for free just for watching this video. That's the only thing you're gonna change is you're gonna, instead of utilizing comments, you're gonna utilize messenger. So it's gonna go power content ad straight to messenger so that you can have those conversations. And then if you go back to the beginning of this video, you will see my messenger conversation format, um, which by the way, I will probably end up putting on my YouTube channel and it will likely go inside the greatest hit. So if you guys want to reference the messenger training, I am going to upload it to my YouTube channel and I am going to put it underneath the Laurel greatest hits. Okay. Hope you guys got a lot of value out of this today. We covered so much. Um, I just want to remind everybody to check the featured section on a regular basis. You will see that I post all of our events and little Lanyap offers right here in the featured section. Hopefully I will see you guys on Monday. We have a conversions over coffee. Come have coffee with me. We